Here what we do is, we put z equal to as usual r times cos theta plus iota sin theta raised to power p by q. Pulling out r, you get r raised to power p upon q. The rest is cos theta plus iota sin theta raised to power p by q, which can be replaced by cos theta plus iota sin theta raised to power p whole raised to power 1 upon q, where p and q are both p is an integer and q is also a natural number. r raised to power p by q into, first of all we get inside p, that is we use de Morris theorem for first with p. This becomes cos theta plus iota sin theta raised to power p becomes cos p theta plus iota sin p theta whole raised to power 1 upon q. Here we generalize cos theta and sin theta, cos p theta and sin p theta by adding 2 and pi. That is r raised to power p by q into cos of 2 and pi plus p theta plus iota sin of 2 and pi plus p theta whole raised to power 1 upon q just as we have done in the previous case. So it becomes r raised to power p by q. Now use again de Morris theorem. We get cos of 2 and pi plus p theta upon q plus iota sin of 2 and pi plus p theta divided by q where n can take any of the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 up to q minus 1. Thus we get exactly q different values. Now next we find out the cube roots of unity. That is 1 raised to power 1 upon 3. 1 can be replaced by 1 plus iota 0 whole raised to power 1 by 3. 1 which can be replaced by cos 0. 0 which can be replaced by sin 0. So wherever we have 1 we can replace it by cos 0 plus iota sin 0. Raised to power 1 by 3. Just as we have said above, here we generalize it by adding 2 and pi to the angle. The angle being 0 here, so it becomes cos of 2 and pi plus iota sin 2 and pi whole raised to power 1 upon 3. Apply de Morvis theorem, we get cos of 2 and pi by 3 plus iota sin of 2 and pi by 3 for n equal to 0 and 1 and 2. When you put n equal to 0, you get cos 0 plus iota sin 0. Putting n equal to 1, you get cos 2 pi by 3 plus iota sin 2 pi by 3. When you put n equal to 2, you get cos of 4 pi by 3 plus iota sin of 4 pi by 3, which can be also written as e raised to power 0, e raised to power iota 2 pi by 3, and e raised to power iota 4 pi by 3. The first value becomes 1. The second value becomes minus 1 by 2 plus iota root 3 by 2. And this third value becomes minus 1 by 2 minus iota root 3 by 2. Now if we put minus 1 by 2 plus iota root 3 by 2 equal to omega, it can be very easily proved that omega square is equal to the third root just as omega square becomes minus 1 by 2 plus iota root 3 by 2 whole square, squaring it, you get 1 by 4, plus iota square 3 by 4, minus 2 iota root 3 by 4, which becomes minus 1 by 2, minus iota root 3 by 2, which is the third root. Hence, the cube roots of unity are 1, omega, and omega square. Clearly, we can note that omega square can be written as 1 by omega or conjugate of omega and omega cube is equal to 1. The third property states their sum 1 plus omega plus omega square is equal to 0 which can be easily verified. It can also be noted that when we plot these three roots on a unit circle, they form an equilateral triangle. The first is A, that is 1, 0. The second is B, that is minus 1 by 2, root 3 by 2. And the third is minus 1 by 2, minus root 3 by 2. All these points lie on the unit circle and form an equilateral triangle. Next is, if n is any natural number or a negative natural number, omega raised per 3n is equal to omega raised per 3 whole raised per n, which is equal to 1. 
if omega raised to power 3n plus 1, it can be put equal to omega raised to power 3n into omega, that is equal to 1 into omega or omega. If you have omega raised to power 3n plus 2, that becomes omega raised to power 3n into omega square. Omega raised to power 3n becomes 1, it becomes 1 into omega square, that is equal to omega square. Thus, any powers of omega, natural or integral powers of omega, can either become 1 or become omega or it will come out to be omega square. Next property can be written as omega and omega square can be written as minus 1 plus iota root 3 by 2 and minus 1 minus iota root 3 by 2. They are squares of each other, a unique property which is peculiar to these two. That is, if you square omega, you get omega square. If you square omega square, you get omega.